When we met at his home in central London, he told me his latest paper had just been published in a medical journal only this month. I started by asking him if he thought he was 105 because of his genes or because he'd worked at it. My old age is due to luck because the reason I haven't died is that I've been so near death, but every time I've just missed it. And, and I think that's the reason I'm so lucky to be alive. Are you still practicing now? I mean, do you see patients? I'm not allowed officially to see patients, but various patients, very grateful patients, still come and I, I see them, but there's always a doctor there and I'm only gossiping with them. And you actually got to work for the last two years of his life with Alexander Fleming, the discoverer of penicillin. I had to see him every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, at 10 o'clock to talk about a ward that technically he was in charge of. But we, he was completely uninterested in clinical medicine. Hmm. And we talked about all sorts of things. I should have written a book about what we did talk about, but I never have. Bill, if you don't mind my saying so, you were the oldest person I've ever spoken to. And I'm wondering, I mean, you were born during just the build-up to the First World War. Can you remember anything from the First World War? Yes, I, I, I can remember receiving postcards from my father from Egypt. My father coming back from the war, um, just before the war finished. And I, I remember the great jollification of, of, of my mother and all, and all the kerfuffle that went on uh, because he, he was back and, and, uh, and, he, and he'd survived France and everything else. But your own war took you to a point where you were a prisoner of war um, of the Japanese. Yes, that's right. I was taken, where was that? That was I was taken prisoner of war in Singapore on the 15th of February 1942. I remember that strangely, although I was on the outskirts of Singapore, not in Singapore, so there was, I think there were three planes came over and dropped what would be now called, I think, small bombs. But I remember it's the only time in my life that I went on, got under my bed because I could hear this bomb swishing down. Well, of course, in our own times, you actually met Saddam Hussein. I'd never uh, heard of him, but what, what was interesting about him, of course, and he was on desensitizing injections for his asthma and his allergy. On all definitions of allergy and all definitions of asthma, he had neither. But if he wasn't uh, sleeping, uh, uh, eating or praying, he was smoking a cigarette. So he was smoking over 40 cigarettes a day. And that was what was wrong with him. So I, I say, my, and he was the, the most grateful patient I've ever had. He, and as far as I was concerned, he was a very pleasant patient. Now, you, you, you said that as a child, you really played with nature. There were no televisions, no radios, no mobile phones, no computers, nothing. Uh, we entertained ourselves. In fact, I remember the first radio ever I heard when I was age 10 at, at the prep school, and I thought this was marvellous that you could send noise, as it were, through the air. I think the, the main difference, as I see it, that now everyone is organised to do all sorts of things with, with all the modern technology and so on. In, in my day, when certainly when I was young, we organised ourselves. Do you have a mobile phone? No. no. And do, do, you, do, do you watch television? I watch a, a lot of television, yes. Do you have a computer? No, 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 no. Gosh. Mm. And how much longer do you think you want to live? Well, I don't know. Uh, I've dealt with death so much myself. The thought of death doesn't worry me. Would you still describe yourself as happy? Oh, yes, I'm very happy. Doctor. I, 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 I never get depressed. When I'd been in prison of war for three and a half years and came back here, I, I decided I was going to start a new life. And I never told my wife when, the, when my children came along anything about prison of war life. I just wouldn't mention it at all. Here was a bit of my life which wasn't very pleasant, and I wasn't, I wasn't going to think about it again. Dr Franklin, it's been a privilege to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for talking.